we realize it's a little after 12, and we got the Lord's Supper, so if y'all say some amen, I'm going to give you my best 15 minutes, amen. If you would mind turning to the book of Job, Job chapter 1, Job chapter 1, we're going to finish up our series, Job chapter 1, we're going to take a look at verses 11 and 12 this morning, Job chapter 1, verses 11 and 12. I'm excited about this word. I really am. It's scary, but I want to make sure that we go over it. Job chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. When you found that word, stand on your feet. Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. We're looking at verses 11 and 12. I love hearing the flipping of pages in the Bible. Job chapter 1, verses 11. And in Job chapter 1, verse number 11, read with me, it says, But put forth thy hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. The title of today's sermon is Unshakable, part number three. Yeah. Unshakable, part number three. Beloved, can we just be real this morning? Yeah. Y'all don't mind if we just get real and be real. Right. You know, we can say we can be unshakable, but it is tough to do. Yeah. See, it's tough to be unshakable when you encounter life's circumstances. Right. See, here's the thing, let's just be honest. When life's circumstances hit us, it shakes us. Yeah. See, we can't pretend that when we encounter a health scare, it doesn't shake us. Right. Right. When we lose a loved one, it shakes us. When we have a child that has lost their mind and decided to challenge you, as if they're the adult and call you out of your name, it shakes us. See, that job that you work really hard, day after day, putting in unlimited hours, and they don't say thank you, but in fact, they want to fire you, it shakes us. See, it's easy to say shakeable, but it's tough to do. But I just want you to think about it. Has there ever been anything in life worth having that was easy to attain? No. Everything that is worth having requires some work. So if you just keep your hand in the master's hand, if you just keep on having faith, if you just keep believing that God will make a way somehow, if you just Keep remembering that God has blessed you before, and if he's blessed you before, he will bless you again. If you just know that you have confidence that knowing that God has never failed you yet, he has never, like, left you hanging, he has always been right there with you. If you can just remember that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, if you can just encourage yourself in the Lord, if you can just remember that you are a child of the living God, you can be able to encourage yourself. You can be able to remind yourself of who you belong to and whom you are. You are a child. You are a king's kid. And because you're a king's kid, you have access to all that daddy has. Whatever daddy has, you have. So I just want to stop by to tell you that instead of you concentrating on how big life circumstances are, yeah, yeah. you should concentrate on how big your God is. Because yeah. if God be for us, who can be against us? Yeah. Those giants that stand in your way, they begin to look small. Those walls that are in your way, they start to become lower. All I want to encourage you to do is to be steadfast, 
be unmovable, but beloved, you are unshakable. See, there's three things that you need to know in this text, and it's a hard text. All right. It really is. But the first thing that helped you to be unshakable is Satan be tripping. Just want to help you that Satan be tripping. Be tripping. Yes, he does. See, tripping is a slang word yeah. for my older, mature like Christians. It used to be used quite a bit. To express someone who is acting a fool. Mm -hmm. It's someone <laughs> who is thinking crazy. It's someone who's acting crazy. And it's someone who is talking crazy. See, in the full Ebonics language, you be tripping. <laughs> See, look at verse number 9 and 10. Satan and his nasty self, with his nasty comments, he told God that Job fears you because you bless him. You provide for him. You like bless his hands. You bless everything he does. You touch everything around him. You have a hedge of protection. Look how rich he is, God. Look at his nasty self. In verse number 11, Satan challenges God. But put forth thy hand. And look, and touch all that he has. Drop your head, stop blessing him, take away everything he has, and he will curse you to your face. Say, be tripping. Yeah. Oh, somebody be thinking crazy and talking that crazy, be tripping. I'm just trying to help you out that this fool went to the king of kings, to the master and sovereign God, talking about Job. I just want to help you see. But beloved, you got to know that your accuser is a nasty, ugly hater. He continues to hate. He will continue to throw you off course. He will continue to cause trouble in your life. He will continue to stop you from doing what God has in store for you to do. But I want you to notice, don't miss this. Satan has to ask God for permission. This nasty hater, this tripping individual has to go to God. Where do you see it? I'm glad that you asked. Look at verse number 11. But put forth thy hand. Oh, God, pray, please, God. Oh, you know what? If you just remove your hand, I dare you to lower the hedge. I dare you not to bless Job. I dare you to hold back your blessing. See, Satan can't do anything unless he asks God for permission. He can't mess with you. He can't do anything about you. Look at Satan just begging God and pressing God to mess with you, slinging his nasty comments. Satan be tripping. He is simply a hater. But I'll tell you one thing, hater. You must ask permission of God. I'll tell you another thing, hater. You are accountable to God. Hater, you report to God. When you are mature in Christ, when you grow in Christ, you get bold. Because this is what you say. If you think I'm going to curse God, you must have lied and died and think you're crazy. See, you're wrong in every side of the bed that you got up on. Because I know that God has been with me. God has never failed me. God has been good to me. God has been good to you. God has blessed me in the morning. God has blessed me in the noon. In the midnight hour, God has blessed me there. I know that pain may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning, and I know that I know too much about it for you to make me doubt it. And I know what thing you nasty hater. I know what thing you be tripping. That God loves me. There is none like me in all the earth. Say you be tripping. Yes. Yes. See, number two, number two, you got to know, this is not survival. Yeah, yeah. See, you can't outwit, you can't outplay, you can't outlast God. This is simply not survival. See, after Satan has thrown his long temper tantrum, after his long soliloquy, God responds. Look what God responds in verse number 12. He says, behold. 
Now, normally this is translated as if God is unveiling a supernatural thing that he wants us to split our attention. Normally God is shining forth his light. But in this particular case, God says, see, as if God is looking at Satan and saying, let's see. You think you're smarter than me? Let's see. You think you're wiser than me? Let's see. This, you think you're calling me out? Let's see. See, there's none like Job in all the earth, you silly rabbit. I'm the one that fearfully and wonderfully made Job. You think you know more about him? I know more about his inner workings than you ever could ever think. If you think, just in case you forgot, I love what the Bible says. He says, I am the one who made earth and created people to live in it. With my hands, I stretch forth out to heaven. All the stars are at my command. And all of a sudden, you think you know more than me. Let's see. Yeah. Look at here. You must know that God is in complete control. Stop worrying about surviving and start placing your trust in the one who sustains you. Stop thinking about, I don't know how we're going to make it. And start thinking, if God brought me to it, he'll bring me through it. Stop thinking about how I don't know how. There's no way out of this situation. And start thinking about how good and how big your God is. Our God is bigger. Our God is stronger. Our God is higher than any other. You are not surviving. You are thriving. See, you must place your faith in God. You must put your hands in the hands of somebody who never failed to yet. Behold, let's see. Y'all chewing on me this morning. That's all right. <laughs> Number three. No, shut up and sit down. All right. Number three, you must know. God sets limits. Thank God that he sets limits. God controls everything. God gives permission. God has authority. All that you go through, all that you bear, has limits. Right. See, in verse number 12, look what he said. He says, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put forth, not put forth, your hand. Look, God gave Satan permission to mess with Job. God dropped the hedge of protection around Job. All of Job's possessions were in Satan's hand. All of his cattle, all of his herds, all of his servants, all of his children, everything was under Satan's control. Meaning, if Satan wanted to kill them, he had the right to do so. It was in his hand. But I'm so glad in verse number 12, look what God said, only upon himself put not forth thy hand. God set a limit on Satan. He couldn't touch Job. He can mess around all the stuff around him, but he could not touch Job. Now, I know this is hard to imagine that God can rain down blessings upon blessings. I know it's hard to understand that we experience living our best life now. I know it's hard to understand that how could a good God who loves us and protects us lower our heads all around us, and then all of a sudden we're living in pain. We're living in agony. We're living in tumultuous situations. We're in deep valleys of our life. Why does God drop the hedge around us? Well, I'm glad that you asked that question. Right. Let me answer that question with what the word says. Look at here, verse number in 2 Corinthians, verse chapter 12. Paul encountered a messenger of Satan. Yeah. Paul had experienced some amazing revelations of God. God worked miracles through Paul. Paul has seen front row seats of the wondrous working power of God. Until one night, God placed a thorn in his side. Paul was in pain. Paul was in agony. Paul prayed three times for God to remove this thorn from his flesh. God, like, listened to him, and eventually God responded. God said that the thorn, look at it, look here, look at here. Paul, I don't want you to be conceited. Paul, I don't want you to think that you're doing this all by yourself. Paul, I want you to know that I'm the master. 
natural things that are his and his to come. This look, the storm that you have in your side, this storm that you've asked to remove, this pain and agony in your life, God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. For thy strength is made perfect in your weakness. I just want to stop by to tell you that the power reigns in your weakness. I want you to know and realize that the pain and suffering you're going through is simply giving God a platform to show up and show out in your life. Some of you wouldn't even pray if you didn't go through something. Some of you wouldn't even know that he could fix it unless you were broken. Some of you wouldn't even know that he reigned supreme unless he was down in the valley with you. I just stop by to tell you that the power reigns supreme in your weakness. Paul said, is that me getting upset? Paul said, I magnify, I celebrate my infirmities. Why? Because Jesus Christ, power works in me. I just stop by to tell you that his power reigns supreme in the midst of your pain and agony. So here's the thing. If his power is great in our weakness, if his power is made strong in our troubles, then instead of you asking God to remove your problems, instead of asking God to remove your struggle, why don't you ask God to show up, show up and show me some of your glory? Why don't you ask God to show up and flex your muscles and remove this situation? I want to know that God has given me front row seats to some wonder-working power all in my life. So Satan is going to mess with you? Yes. Is Satan going to like mess up everything? Yes. Is everything with God going to be sunshine and roses? No. But I thank God that things are going to be bad. I thank God that things are going to be sideways sometimes. I thank God that he has me, he carries me, he comforts me, he protects me. There's some limits on my pain, there's limits on my jealousy, there's limits on my challenge. So I just want to stop by to tell you that if you're going to listen to what unshakable looks like, instead of me crying and complaining, I'm going to rejoice. Instead of me being depressed, I'm going to celebrate. Instead of me asking why me, I'm going to say thank you, Jesus. Why? Because how would you ever have a testimony if you never went through a test? I just want to stop by to tell you that the God I serve is a mighty God. He's able to move mountains. He's able to quiet the storms in my life. So regardless what happens to me, I'm unshakable. Regardless what happens to you, you should be unshakable. Instead of the trials and the troubles and the tribulations, I just want to celebrate. See, my grandmother played the organ at our church for 53 years. She never accepted any pay. She did it all the time. And she used to play a song that I didn't understand what it meant. I didn't like understand what was going through. But here's this song. It says that I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear calling on my ear, it comes, the Son of God discloses. And then this is the part that really gets me. He says, and he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Oh, there's one more song that touches my life, that brings tears to my life. It says, oh, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. He says, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. So you don't understand unless you go through something. You don't understand that you need to embrace that pain. You don't understand because you can't experience that joy that overflows your soul unless you go through something. And it says like something happened. I just want to help you out when you're struggling and you're getting that out. When you're praying and stop rolling out of your face. All you got to know that something happens. And now I know he touched me and he made me whole.